Hey, it's Tim, and today I'm baking deep dish pizza from the book Bread Illustrated by America's Test Kitchen. So it's got this cool lamination technique that's borrowed from pastry baking. We make a dough and we make a sauce. The sauce is going to be done later, so let's start on the dough first. We're going to need a cake pan for the dough when it's baked into a pizza, and we're going to need a non-stick skillet to make the sauce. First, into this bowl of the stand mixer go the dry ingredients. That's all-purpose flour. And this is yellow cornmeal, which is a little interesting. It gives some flavor and some texture to the dough. There's some salt and some sugar and some yeast. And I'm going to whisk that and then mix it on the lowest speed of the mixer for about 30 seconds or so with the butter and then I'll add the water and after that first 30 seconds I'm going to stir the bowl down to incorporate all of the liquid with the flour and then let it go for another minute, minute and a half. So here I am stirring it down. All the ingredient amounts are listed in the description as well as the steps that I take to bake this. So now once it's mixed for about two minutes in total it makes what we call a shaggy dough and now it's time to knead it so it's going to go on to the medium low speed which is two on a KitchenAid mixer and it'll go for eight minutes after which it looks like this sort of the consistency of uh, play-doh or maybe silly putty and into the bowl a little bit of vegetable oil and then I'm going to form this dough into a ball. And I'm going to use the tension that's from the countertop. The dough kind of sticks to the countertop as you drag it across. And that helps create a nice, taut, tight little ball of dough. It's going to go into the bowl. And it's going to rest for either 60 to 90 minutes at room temperature if you want to make the pizza right away. Or you can pop it in the refrigerator, which is what I did. Now, over medium heat, non-stick skillet, olive oil, minced onions, saute those for a couple of minutes until they start to get a little bit translucent, then add garlic, and that goes for less than 30 seconds, and then add 14 ounce can of fresh tomatoes, black pepper, I use fresh oregano, but you can use can uh, dried oregano if you choose, and then there's a little bit of sugar that I added, and then this last bit, turn the heat off and add some ripped up basil leaves and olive oil. Now there's the dough after it's rested. I left mine in the refrigerator for 48 hours and it didn't seem to hurt anything. So the book says eight hours to 16 hours, but you know, I had other things going on. So that's what that's about. Now I'm just gonna pat it out into a 12 by 18 rectangle. And then I'm gonna spread it with butter. This is two tablespoons of softened butter room temperature. You know, if I cut the video right here, you could think I was making a cinnamon roll without the cinnamon. That's kind of what's happening. So it gets rolled into a tight cylinder. And I, was, I said at the beginning, it's kind of like a pastry technique. So if you think about laminating dough, you take a slab of butter and you lay it on the dough and then you make all these series of folds. Well, here's the fold. We only do one. But because it's rolled up in a coil in the first place, you've got nine layers of dough in that or more now form it into a little ball pinch the sides let it sit this is after a half an hour 45 minutes sitting at room temperature i'm going to roll it out into a 13 inch round that's going to go in that well-oiled nine inch cake pan it's a good idea to try to roll from the middle out and then once you get it to the size you want, you roll it on top of the rolling pin and then put it in the pan. And this is a two-step deal. You put it in, do the best you can to shape it, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then come back to it like I am now. And the dough will relax, the gluten chills out, and you can form it better. That's a half a cup of mozzarella cheese on the bottom. The sauce goes on top of that, and then Parmesan goes on top of that. It's baked in a 425 degree oven on the bottom rack for 20 to 25 minutes, then cooled for 10 minutes in the pan, and then it comes out of the pan, and you can cut it. The mozzarella is 
on the bottom so that this really uh, thick sauce doesn't ruin the crust. So now the crust is still going to um, be nice and dry because the cheese acts as a barrier. And you can kind of see it there. But notice those holes in the corner of the dough up by where my hands are. That's the lamination. That's the layers of dough. And I'm going to give this a taste now. So yeah, it's got some cheese and it's got a homemade nice fresh tomato sauce and it's got all that butter in it. Cornmeal gives it a nice little t uh, flavor and texture and it's got these layered layers. I've never made this before and I think it turned out pretty good for the first shot. Look at that nice look at that nice brown bottom. Nice crispy. That's because it was down in the bottom rack of the oven. And that lamination. Those air bubbles. Cool stuff. So that's deep dish pizza. Thanks for watching.